Negros Occidental. It has been called buglas or cut off, following the idea that it was once part of a larger piece of land. It is bound by the Visayan Sea in the north, Negros Oriental in the east, the Sulu Sea in the south, and the Guimara Strait in the west. More than anything else, however, Negros Occidental is known as the Sugar Bowl of the Philippines. This province is the birthplace of some delicacies that are very well known throughout the Philippines. I couldn't wait to see how true this all is, then with a trip to try the delicious treats of Negros Occidental. What better way to start the day than with a trip to the Silay Market? The day was just beginning for everyone, but the market vendors had their wares up, and the local delicacies looked delicious. From Putupan to Suman, Bicho Bicho, Bibinka, and Lumpia. There is something for everyone here. A short ride away is the Suriname restaurant, one of Silai's oldest and most popular restaurants. Established in 1962, it was the first stop for meals for the sugarcane workers before going to the fields. It has maintained its rustic charm with its family-style dining. There are a lot of Negrense dishes here, including chicken tinola, pork guinili, rellenong bangus, ginisang ginamos, lechon paksiu, pork and beans, lechon kawali, and ensaladang langka. One of the most popular dishes is tinolang bangus, but unlike other parts of the country, here they use a souring agent that is often used in Negros Occidental. They use batuan, a green fruit which resembles a small tomato. I found it extraordinary that there is a Vietnamese restaurant nearby. I believe that this is a great indication that Negros Occidental, although steeped in a lot of traditional style cooking, is trying something different. The Rao Ram Cafe, run by Silvia Herange and Andrew Kadaidai, is the first Vietnamese restaurant in Bacolod. Adding to the restaurant's charm is a mural depicting life in rural Vietnam. The rice noodle salad, Guibon or pomelo salad. The balut and sweet chili were some of the featured dishes. My personal favorite was the guicon or vegetarian spring roll. The vegetables were so fresh and crunchy, and the side dish of peanut sauce, which was freshly made, was just perfect. What better way to end the meal than with a glass of traditional Vietnamese coffee with its slow drip process? One of my most anticipated destinations on this trip was to discover the bakeries where the famous delicacies originated. Sugarlandia, home of where Barquilios originated in Bacolod, was first on the list. Tia Dami started this home industry in the 1930s. Since then, the tradition has passed on to her daughter, Teresa Parcon, who welcomed us. 
So we're in Sugarlandia. I'm with Miss Teresa, and behind her is a picture of their beloved uh, Lola. Lola. Tia Demi. Tia Demi. Tia Demi. And around us are all the wonderful products of Sugarlandia. Right. And I cannot wait to see how they make Barquillos. Sure. Teresa showed how. As a little girl, she would help in her mother's shop during summer vacation to earn some extra money. So this is really cool. I've never seen how this was done. I've always wondered how they make barquillos. But this is just a sample because there's actually a bigger um, factory. factory. So is it in a bigger scale in the factory? All the same, just the same like this. They do oh, it wow. like this. this so it's all right. handmade. Handmade. Angaling. Okay, really, really cool. It comes in different sizes. That mm -hmm. one that we're making is the smaller one. Yes, I see that, yeah. I must say that it was really interesting to see how barquillos are made. Over the years, developments in technology brought a larger market and improvement over the cumbersome charcoal-fired cooking stove to the present gas burners. There is also an amazing variety of take-home treats to be found here. Their products now include piaya, merengue, barquillos, and chocolate barquillos, to name a few and they are now distributed in key cities around the Philippines. In the Natural Garden Cafe, organic herbs are grown in-house and used extensively in their food offerings. The cafe was busy when I arrived. It looked like a popular destination for students. The front part of the restaurant had bamboo tables and chairs, where one could sit and enjoy a view of the backyard, planted with fruit trees and vegetables. I met Lourdes Navarosa, who is the Welcome Home Foundation's administrative officer. She gave me a tour of the cafe's garden, where they grow their own herbs. This foundation aims to empower the Filipino deaf through education and experience, where they take charge of the many garden and restaurant duties. The menu varies each day, and all the dishes are reasonably priced. Their wraps are incredibly priced at only 50 pesos, or about a dollar. The thigh chicken wrap and the Italian wrap were available that day. They also have really delicious homemade cookies. Chicken in a sal. A popular dish from Bacolod finds its roots here at Nena's Rose Manukan. It's the spot to go if you are looking forward to that distinct flavor. This style of cooking is quite different from how barbecued chicken is usually prepared around the Philippines. Marinated with special sauces and grilled to perfection to bring out that special flavor, their chicken in a cell is known for being particularly tender. Their menu wasn't limited to chicken. And we had pork barbecue, batikolon, isol, and even bangos. Tucked away in one of the side streets of Bacolod is the Bailon's Food Specialties. This small, unassuming bakery is home to the Philippines' best piaya. A piaya is a Muscovado-filled flatbread that originated in Bacolod. Once I did get a bite of the crispy cookie, I had to agree it was the best. Another kind of special dessert that has its origins in Bacolod is the napoleones. It is similar to a croissant, but with a custard filling and a light icing. Rolly's Cafe and Bake Shop had, in fact, created the very first Napoleones. Ilana Garcia, whose great-grandfather started the business, sat down with us as we tried their other specialties, like chicken empanada, meat pie,
In Negros, so much of the food preparation is steeped in tradition, but it also adapts and evolves. This is true in Pendi's, another well-known restaurant in Bacolod. The owner, Omon Maravilla, originally from Iloilo, brought some of the traditional recipes from there. Well, we, we have quite a lot, but we have a lot of from, from the, uh, the old country. We have batsoy, of course, but uh, we've, we've moved on to uh, calling it batsoy because it's batsoy now with lechon on it. We also have pancit molo, but uh, it's slightly different, you know. Everything came from the, from, from the old country, but when it gets to Negros, it somehow gets uh, redefined, you know, even with lumpia, with batsoy, pancit molo, and so many other things. I mean, those are the local favorites. I'm not the actual chef, but I did most of the recipes now in the last, maybe the last 20 years, me and my mom. I love the interior of Pendy's. One can see why it has become the popular choice of venue for the older and more affluent in Bacolod. I especially appreciated the paintings on the walls created by Omon's aunt. Over at Paseo Verde on Laxon Street, Chef Jomi Gaston of Cafe Uma told me about his restaurant's humble beginnings. As you know, like Bacolod, um, again, before, the, the eating scene kind of like just really developed, I would say, in the last two decades. It's when restaurants started sprouting up. So it was sort of like a bit of timing, early 2000. There was that, that sort of demand or need mm. for new places to eat. Of course, we had, we had the old standbys. We had Bob's, we had Bendy's, the restaurants we grew up with. But at the same time, uh, we wanted to offer something that was uh, different. And when the cafe first opened, it was really just a very simple panini sandwich, grilled sandwich, and salad cafe. Okay. You know, that's all. It was just a hole in the wall. The interior of Cafe Uma was a delightful display of Negros Occidental's sugarcane industry. Old newspaper clippings paneled one wall and a map of Negros Occidental on the other. The Negros Farmers Weekend Market was such a delightful surprise. It didn't look like the usual kind of market, for it looked more like a garden. It had well-spaced stalls, neatly lined paths, and plenty of space for people to mill about. There was a wide variety of produce, which ranged from organic vegetables to fresh fruit, an assorted variety of meat and dried fish. Negros is known for its sugar cane, and now you can actually have some sugar cane juice. So it puts everything here, even the calamansi and the sugar cane, and the juice comes out behind it. All right. Ruby Cruz, the organizer of the market, shared that they have come a long way since they began three years ago. Uh, it really seems full this morning. Is it always like this? No, it took time really for the market to be like this but um, it's nice to have the support of the community yeah and it's a really nice it's a lot of different kinds of produce a lot of um, herbal we have organic herbal that's right yeah meat fish fruits and yeah. what's really cool about this part is that now there are places to eat so yeah and uh, the, the food that you can have here is only on on weekends so ah. we're closed monday to friday yes yeah cool and, and right. everybody doesn't have a restaurant so it's oh. just really here that if you like the food, it's just really here. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, it's interesting to know. All right. Yeah. Now is the perfect time for a cup of coffee. What better way to have it than in 365 Modern Cafe?
this cafe has various ways of preparing coffee. I decided to try the siphon brood style. There is something great in seeing your coffee brewed in front of you. So we pretty much, the only thing we try to do different, we try to add a more personalized approach or personalized touch to our customers. So when customers walk in, we want to make sure that um, they don't come here just for coffee. We try to come in here like we kind of know what they kind of want. So that's what we try to incorporate. We try to mix things up different that way. Yeah. But more than just coffee, this cafe is well known for its delicious oven baked pizza, the smoked chorizo pasta. Baby back ribs are the most requested dishes. The island of Negros is surrounded by the sea and by abundant marine life. This is most apparent at the 18th Street Pala Pala Seafood Grill and Restaurant. very popular with locals and tourists alike. Like the Dampas style of restaurants in Manila, customers can choose their seafood. I was amazed at the incredible variety of seafood. Everything was absolutely fresh. Palapala actually is a term which is like an old tradition here in Bacolod where you buy seafood and you have it cooked right beside it. So palapala is like pails, also means pails of seafood. So what we did actually because we, we really love the concept is we made it more convenient for, for, um, for the diners to have it more accessible, more uh, convenient and more clean. The restaurant incorporated designs in its interiors from one might see in a fishing town. These included shell lamps and lighting fixtures that resembled fishing cages. Their blue marlin salpicao is a must try. The tanigue ceviche is one of the most sought after dishes, as well as their pepper prawns. Negros Occidental takes great pride in being known as a leader in the country's organic agriculture. The organic movement, more than anywhere else in the Philippines, has been embraced by many local restaurant owners. 
Ramon Uy Jr. of Fresh Start Organic showed me some of the delicious snacks available in their small but quaint restaurant. Actually, our restaurant is an uh, organic and natural store, so basically we serve food that is free from artificial uh, flavorings, colorings, preservatives, or other chemicals usually used in the conventional um, stores and cafes. No? So we're trying to be different. No? We wanted the wholesome, um, real, uh, fresh ingredients that's also traceable no? from either from our own farms or from the farms of our partner, other organic farmers in the province. At the same time, we also cater to artisanal producers, no? the local you know, um, producers. We current them that they will produce food that is also simple and with the same principles as we follow. No? There were also quite a few choices that range from wraps to sandwiches. Before leaving, I took a look at the healthy choices available, from organic food, herbal food supplements, shampoo, soap, and even organic wine and beer. Who knew organic could be so much fun and healthy? The 26 Herb Garden and Store on 6th Street in Bacolod, owned by Dr. Salakata, was a cozy and homey find. Since everything is organic, great care is taken in shielding the plants from insects. We have two nurseries right now where we, where we germinate our seeds. Uh, we have to put them in nurseries to make sure that they're strong enough to be transplanted outside or into pots. And mostly it's uh, the leafy green vegetables and herbs, a lot of herbs. I'm probably one of the, uh, those who really believe in the, no. in the taste of fresh herbs no. for cooking, as well as some with medicinal purposes. And uh, some of them are fruits, so sometimes we, we germinate papayas. But we have beautiful herbs that can grow you know, perennially mm. and anytime, like all our basil, we yeah. have Thai basil, we have our Italian basils, we have chives, they grow like, you know, anytime. like weeds, yes, yes. anytime. <laughs> yeah, but the nice thing about it, we can even grow parsley and celery, which a lot of the restaurants, before they would have to get it from Baguio or mm. the mountain province. Now it's available here locally. And oh, wow. To make sure that even the water they use for watering is pure, they get it from a deep well. This is part of our livestock area. Mm. So we have our native chickens, which are called darang. Oh. Uh, then we have our layers. These are chickens that we use their eggs basically for okay. cooking and for selling. And these are uh, European. <laughs> they're wow. Czech. They're Czech chickens. And then we have our turkeys. Oh, so okay. this this area is relatively our poultry, you know, fowl area. Mm. Yeah. In Dr. Salakata's garden, she also raises rabbits. I was surprised to hear about using rabbit as a meat choice. But Dr. Salakata shared that this was a healthier choice than other kinds of meat because it has less fat. Inside the kitchen, I met Jory Aro, whose enthusiasm for cooking was infectious. He whipped up a kale apan apan for us. If I had to choose a place to restore, revive, and inspire myself in Negros Occidental, I would like to place May's Garden at the top of my list. Owned and run by Mr. and Mrs. Uy, the couple have long been in the business of propagating a healthier lifestyle. I had a glass of Moringa Shake and May's Garden Salad. I initially thought it was just a restaurant, 
but was amazed at the fact that this was also an event venue and a resort. Imagine being surrounded by a picturesque man-made lake Rolling lawn, a swimming pool, and a menu of organic dishes. Although frequented by locals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, tourists or people celebrating special occasions can stay overnight in the cottages. This was truly a holistic view of a healthy lifestyle. Everyone from Bacolod knows that a visit to Aboys is a must if you want to have traditional native fare. Featured in the Mila Guide as one of the top 500 restaurants in Asia, Ah Boys is the only restaurant in the Western Desires which is on that famous list. Nestor Evaresto started Ah Boys 25 years ago. The huge restaurant is perfect for family-sized gatherings and reunions. Just like many of the restaurants I visited in Maholod, he also had his own little herb garden in the back of his establishment. As I entered the 27th Mascon Cafe, I felt as if I was in the home of a wealthy sugar baron. This cafe could well be an ancestral home with all the photographs of bygone years on the walls. This well-loved restaurant is known for its Spanish, Filipino food. At the village restaurant, the chefs can be seen preparing food through the glass windows separating the dining area and the kitchen. This cafe is a popular choice for weddings and parties. It was refreshing to check out a small cafe for a change. Cafe 1925 was next on the list as a must visit for a foodie, and it did not disappoint. Cozy and tiny, and with an artsy blue and yellow theme, this would definitely be the place to bring someone on a first date. away from this delightful find is Emma Laxon's house. Listed as a heritage home, the Emma Laxon Bakery did not have any distinguishing signs. Nora Laxon still prepares her specialties of pili squares, lumpia obod, and empanada, just as her great-great-grandmother did. Two notable pastry shops, 
were Felicia's Pastry Cafe and Steakhouse and Anne Co. Cakes. Felicia's is also well established as a steakhouse and has interiors of dark wood, which gave it an air of elegant sophistication. It has a loyal following established over years of serving what many say are the best chocolate cake and mocha sans rival in Bacol. Anne Co. Cake's interiors were a delightful display of artworks created by Anne Co.'s artist husband, Charlie Co. Many of her cakes are recipes passed on from her late mother, a well-known pastry maker in Silaya. The well-known bakery El Ideal in Silay started in 1920 and provided snacks to gamblers who couldn't leave their tables. These days, it is more popularly known as the home of the famous guapo pie. An ingenious creation using the guava fruit, this pie has kept El Ideal on the map of places to visit. My trip to Negros Occidental went by too quickly. In this brief visit, I learned so much about the interesting origins of some of the country's well-known pastries and dishes. This journey also made me think deeply about how incredibly rich and multifaceted Negros Occidental is. This was a culinary adventure beyond my expectations. Thank you, the land of sweet surprises. I hope to visit you again soon.